Good morning, my friends. We're going to keep the uh, camera angle low today because I'm here with my little man, Ollie. Do you guys have two names for your dogs? <laughs> like, do you have a nickname? Do your dog have, like, their name and then a nickname that you use? Like, does your dog respond to both names? I think we have nicknames for all our dogs, kind of. Like, I call Ollie little man all the time because he is. He's my little man. And uh, Chick P usually just gets called P or the P. And Penny gets called Pen Pen a lot, but it doesn't really matter because Penny's deaf, so we could really call her anything we want. <laughs> she doesn't know her name anyway. Yeah, just curious. You guys have uh, two names? You everybody use a nickname for their dog too? Is that that's pretty normal? I think so. And look at me, long sleeve shirt. It's wonderful. Why is that wonderful? Because it's actually a pretty cool morning. So we had some good thunderstorms yesterday, and it's cooled off, but it's still supposed to get. Pretty hot this afternoon, 30 degrees, which after the last couple of weeks of 39 degree temperatures uh, seems like a reprieve from the heat, but that's still still pretty damn hot, that is for sure. You know, one of my number one concerns, and this is legit, in the last like couple months as I've been watching things unfold with like wildfires and floods and all sorts of like crazy climate change stuff happening around the world and just my own experience this summer. This summer I have been canceling and rescheduling like an astounding amount of appointments, like probably like 20 to 25 appointments so far. I mean, think about that, that's a lot of appointments I've had to cancel and it's been either because of extreme heat or the thunderstorms, because along with these heat waves or heat events, that's what happens. You get these super hot masses of air coming through and then you get a little cold front that slams into it and next thing you know you got some thunderstorms and they've just been, it's been crazy man. It's been crazy the amount of like storms we've had this summer. So climate change is a real concern for me because right now like we've had a number of days in the, uh, in the high 30s. Like what's that look like? say five, 10 years, let's just say 10 years out from now. I mean, I'm only 47, I plan to be running this business for quite a while, you know? But what's the, what's the climate look like 10 years from now? Like, can I even book appointments during the day 10 years from now? Or is it gonna be like, you know, 48 degrees from like 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. or something? Like, and even now the heat just stays so much longer. Like it's like sometimes the, the high for the day is at like five o'clock now. I don't I don't ever remember it being like that. I mean, uh, if you watch some of my videos recently, um, I think I had mentioned that this coming year, 2022, my plan is to close for the month of February because last February was so bad with snowstorms and extreme cold days that I canceled all like half of my appointments in the month of February got canceled. I ended up moving them all to March, which overloaded March. So it just it doesn't make sense. And the fact that I'm like considering closing my business for one month in the winter because I have to train outside, I don't have a facility, and the, the weather's just merciless. Now watch me close down this February and we get some sort of super mild February where there's no snow and it's like sunny every day, but well, can't predict the weather. So today, I'm just out with Ollie because uh, it's cool enough that I can go and take the dogs for a run this morning, which is nice. It's been just too hot recently. And what I thought I'd chat a little bit about in the video today is um, dog behaviorists. So I hear this term a lot, and I've had a number of people over the years reach out and ask if I'm a dog behaviorist. And it's always sort of perplexed me, like, what? What's a dog behaviorist? Ollie, like, aren't isn't anybody who works with dog behavior and modifies dog behavior, isn't that essentially a dog behavior? Holly, let's go this way, pal. Good boy. Um, so I kind of, I tried to do some research before I made the video. The whole dog training world is murky enough. And this is a topic I plan to get into in a video at some point, but it's gonna, man, it's just, it's such a touchy subject and it's gonna take a bunch of research and no matter what I say, people are gonna be pissed off. But I kinda of wanted to talk eventually about sort of the difference between a pure positive style of dog trainer and a balanced style dog trainer. I mean, at its core, 
wrap it. I mean, at its core, again, that's a, you know, as soon as you start shooting your mouth off about stuff, people are going to get upset. Holly, down here, pal. Um, but essentially, pure positive training means they don't want to use any sort of adversives or any sort of negative feedback to the dog, essentially, more or less. Um, whereas balance training, the ethos in the balance training world would be we need, we need a mix of lots of positive reinforcement along with some adversives or corrections, you know, some sort of mild, fair consequences to stop unwanted behavior and then rewards to, to strengthen wanted behavior. But again, that's a much bigger topic for a much longer video. Um, so there's already a lot of controversy in the dog training world. And there's no, when I say there's no certification, what I mean is there's like, there's lots of little governing bodies in the dog training world, but like, who are they? Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm certified by several different dog schools and trainers, but who are they? I mean, those certifications mean a lot to me because the trainers that certified me, I respect them and I think they're wonderful trainers. So to get a certification from them saying that I'm qualified, that I've learned everything that they've learned essentially, meant a lot to me but at the end of the day like who are those trainers that certified me who certified them what sort of techniques do they use and that's sort of the problem in the dog world even when you see someone certified like who certified them like there's no dog training course at a major university or something that like holds clout so I mean a lot of people will want to get a, a certification from like a fairly big governing body in dog training because then at least there's some sort of like clout behind that certification but you also don't need to be certified you could just hang up a placard tomorrow that says you know John's dog training and that's it right there's no certification so when I sort of tried to do a bit of research on this from what I can see a dog behaviorist um, has completed some sort of course somewhere on dog behavior and their specialty is in like dog behavior, which again, as a trainer, like what am I doing? So I think some of the differences from maybe what I could see is like they're not necessarily trainers, so to speak. So they're not like, they're not dealing with like how to teach a dog sit or how to teach stay or how to teach leash walking. They're coming in and trying to provide you answers to why your dog may be acting a certain way, if that sort of makes sense. Ollie. So we're gonna do a little, uh, little detour here because that lady's walking her dog over there and again, it's just super weird sometimes to be walking down the street with a camera <laughs> and people are looking at you. Ollie, come on little buddy, cross the street. Come on pal. So from what I can see, a dog behaviorist is supposed to be a specialist in solving like dog behavior and why your dog may be doing certain things and how to sort of communicate and relate to your dog but I would say that if you're any sort of dog trainer worth their salt then that's exactly what we do as dog trainers to me dog like that's a dog trainer like a dog trainer is someone that like deals with unwanted behaviors that also teaches obedience that works with different types of issues from you know, little annoying issues like digging a hole or nipping to all the way up to aggression, right? So like as, as a dog trainer, I, I mean, I'm not certified as a dog behaviorist, but I would certainly say like I work with dog behavior, that's all I do is work with dog behavior. So again, all of these titles get so murky and when people are saying, are you a dog behaviorist? I mean, do I have some sort of certification from some sort of like, like organization that just made themselves up to certify like saying that I'm a dog a quote unquote certified dog behaviorist no but I have certification saying I'm a dog trainer I'll tell you what's more important in my opinion this is the most important thing in dog training if you're looking for a dog trainer it's experience and it's results and that's it and by this point I've probably worked with close to if not more than 5,000 dogs like I've been doing this for seven years now almost 
and you know during my apprenticeship years I worked with hundreds and thousands of dogs over that time like I was working at a dog school that saw about 700 dogs through the doors each week so I was working with tons of dogs different breeds different issues so I mean I've got I've got a lot of experience so I don't I don't know if you just get a certification program like what kind of experience you gained there like how many dogs have you worked with have you tested these techniques do they work for sure <laughs> you know um, but just kind of keep this in mind when you're looking for someone to help you with dog issues a lot of these certifications are just they're not based in anything they're based in some sort of organization but who's that organization like where did that organization come from what are their certifications and accreditations like it's just it's this really weird like it's this weird career to be in and the way I've described it is dog training is more it's almost like an art form like it's not it's hard to say it's science based because the way science works is like I should be able to apply technique A to a thousand dogs and get the same result. I mean, that's how science works. It's repeatable, it's testable, and it, that's, that's ludicrous. Anybody who's worked with more than one dog or owned more than one dog in their lives knows that dogs have different personalities, right? And what's, what works for one dog may not work for another dog. So a good dog trainer has lots and lots of techniques and methods and training tools at their disposal and they're helping you assess what the right tool and technique is for your dog and, and helping you find what gets the result with your dog. Each dog's an individual, so to me, it can never be science-based because there's, there's too many variables in dog training. Like, what's your dog's personality? What are the behavioral issues? What's the environment? What types of tools are you using, right? There's just too many variables for this to be sort of science-based. And in my opinion, oh, I if you have a trainer that says they're science-based, like I've run to the hills. I don't even know what that means, science-based. What's science-based? Like what science are they going off of? The amount of science dedicated to dog training out there, like real science with scientists like doing repeatable testing, like that, that would fill a thimble. Like there's just not that much going in. There's lots going into how dogs think, their cognition. There, there are some stuff going on out there. Um, but in terms of like what technique works best for sit, what technique works best for reducing aggression, there's just there's just no science there yet. <laughs> there just isn't. And it just comes from experience. It comes from working with lots of dogs like this and trying different techniques to see what works best with certain dogs. So anyway, yeah. What's the difference between a dog trainer, a dog behaviorist, a dog whatever, other titles are floating around out there? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. I'd say try and do a little bit of research on the person that you want to hire, look at their website, maybe check out some videos if they've got stuff posted. See who they are, see if you trust their judgment, see if it sounds like they're, they're talking common sense, and kind of go that route. I mean, the number one reason I do these videos is so that potential clients can sort of tune in and see, they can look, they can just see what kind of guy I am, how I interact with my dogs, how well trained and well behaved my dogs are. So it gives you a little window into this. And if in the same sort of like way I can give everybody some general guidelines out there or some general information like I'm trying to do in this video, then great. Hopefully everybody takes a little bit from my videos and learns a little bit and it helps to uh, sort of get my personality and my ethos and methodology and how I am with my dogs out there. Great. Serves its purpose then. But yeah, so if you're looking for a dog trainer, dog behaviorist, dog whatever, I don't know, do a little bit of research, but uh, it's murky waters out there, and the definitions can be very fluid between what a behaviorist or a trainer does. In my opinion, and no offense to somebody who's gone to school to become a behaviorist or completed a program, but like if you work with dogs, you're a dog trainer. Like that's sort of the title we've deemed that fits the, the job description, right? You're training a dog. You're either training a dog to do something, which we would call obedience, or you're training a dog to stop doing something, which is typically called behavior modification. But to me, it's all dog training. Whatever title you want to slap on it doesn't make you better or worse. Experience and skills and results is what makes a good trainer versus a not so good trainer. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to finish up here with Ollie. Go grab the dogs and take uh, Chick, Pete, and Penny for a good run this morning. 
And then I got to start early today. I got six lessons. You know why I got so many lessons today? Because of rain days last week and I've had to move everybody and find a spot for them this week to make up for last week. And that is just the way it's been going, week after week. Sometimes you get a whole day off in the week because of rain. But then the following week, I'm paying for it because I got to put all those lessons that I missed last week somewhere else. So it is what it is and we'll keep fighting through the weather. I, I can't believe I'm going to say this because I've been a lover of summer my whole life. But in a small way, I can't wait to get to the fall because my job just becomes so much easier in the fall. I don't have to worry about the heat for my clients or their dogs or my dogs. So, Ugh. But we're going to plug away and get through the, uh, the month of August, keep surviving these heat events and uh, doing the best I can. And until the next video, hopefully you get out with your dog, maybe do a little bit of training or just spend some time hanging with your pup, man. All right, we'll see you later on.